Dear Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> uh, thank you very much for the uh, invitation and possibility to discuss a, a topic which is uh, becoming more and more important uh, uh, in, the, in the coming years. Uh, that is uh, cognitive uh, decline, uh, which is happening, of course, uh, uh, with aging, but also many other conditions are contributing to it. It has been estimated that uh, uh, if nothing happens, there will be a, a dramatic increase uh, in the risk of dementia uh, in a population. And um, <clears throat> if we could delay uh, five years uh, of the onset of uh, dementia, then we could reduce uh, the incidence of dementia or prevalence of dementia by 50%. So it's extremely important to consider the possibilities. How can we uh, prevent dementia? And I will tell you something uh, about it here, related to diabetes especially. Uh, we know today that uh, for dementia or Alzheimer's disease, there are several risk factors and you can appreciate that uh, many of these factors are the same as for cardiovascular disease in general. But also we know about many uh, protective factors that include uh, uh, physical activity, uh, uh, antioxidants, fish intake, coffee, uh, antihypertensive therapy, and so on. Now, in our prospective studies, uh, we have been uh, uh, assessing uh, how the vascular risk factors uh, contribute to the risk of dementia. So the vascular risk uh, factors were measured midlife, and 22 years later, uh, dementia was assessed. So during the 20 years period of time, these factors uh, actually produced uh, a very significant increase in the, uh, new cases of uh, dementia. So we have to remember that uh, uh, when we are talking about risk factors, we have to consider uh, the risk factors much earlier, a few decades earlier than the actual clinical disease appears. Now, based on these data, we uh, developed also the simple risk score that can be used to assess the um, uh, risk of dementia in 20 years uh, prediction. And here you see the uh, factors included here, age, education, sex, systolic blood pressure, uh, body mass index, uh, serum cholesterol, physical activity. And combining these things and having a score values, we could see that there is a linear increase in the risk of dementia. And this has been validated in many other populations now. I would like to emphasize uh, the importance of physical activity. Uh, and uh, if people are physically active, the risk of dementia adjusted for all other factors here, risk of dementia is uh, uh, more than 50% less. Uh, than in physically inactive people. And interestingly, when we take into account the effect of a genetics, and that is uh, the genetics, uh, the, the primary genetics for dementia, Alzheimer's disease is APOE epsilon 4 allele. Those who are carriers of this high risk allele and uh, <coughs> they will have a very high risk if they are physically inactive. But the physical activity can reduce this uh, uh, high risk related to the genetic effect. So it's a good news for those individuals who have uh, this APOE epsilon 4 allele, which is relatively common in many populations. Now another uh, another good news is that uh, there are these protective factors other than physical activity. Uh, simple like uh, coffee drinking uh, has been shown that uh, three to five cups of coffee uh, 
can reduce a risk more than 50%, in, in, in this case about 70%, but then uh, drinking more than five cups, it doesn't help anymore further. So moderate coffee drinking, uh, unfortunately we don't have a very good data on a tea drinking because uh, in many populations like in Europe, the tea drinking is not so common, but the coffee drinking is much more common, so we can actually do the assessment. But I believe that the tea drinking would have a similar effect. We also combined um, uh, the data uh, using uh, various dietary uh, questions, uh, so-called beneficial components uh, and de detrimental components, uh, 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 sweets, candy, salt, uh, and, and sausage cheese, uh, red meat, processed meat, and combining all these things to a score of, uh, of diet, we could uh, show that those who, ha who were in the highest fertile of a dietary score, uh, that is a very healthy diet, their risk of uh, dementia in 20 years' time was 90% lower than in those individuals who were in the lowest fertile, and that is the most unhealthy uh, diet. So we, we know quite a bit of, uh, of these things today. So what about diabetes? Uh, diabetes has been evaluated as a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease in several uh, studies, and this meta-analysis uh, shows very clearly that the most of the studies uh, actually show uh, the association that the diabetes is increasing the risk about uh, 55% uh, altogether, or 57% altogether. So diabetes seems to be uh, in various populations and various ethnic groups uh, associated with the risk of uh, uh, dementia. And there are many kinds of studies that uh, have been carried out. We know that the cerebral infarcts uh, are more common in the type 2 diabetes and dementia, so cerebrovascular effects uh, seem to be very important uh, since uh, many diabetic individuals do have a uh, mild stroke or even uh, clinically undetected stroke. Uh, we carried out a study in Finland uh, where we took uh, people over 85 years of age and uh, evaluated them prospectively uh, in this way that we had about 600 individuals to start with and, uh, and they were included in 10-year follow-up. Those who died, most of them had a uh, neuropathological autopsy so that uh, it was possible to actually see uh, the brain uh, what has happened in the brain. So in this study, uh, the diabetes uh, was increasing the risk of Alzheimer's disease about 2.5 fold, and also the vascular dementia, that is uh, uh, dementia related to cerebrovascular uh, uh, problems, also about two fold. Uh, and very clearly, um, over the years, uh, this difference uh, became larger. When we adjusted for a genetic effect of APOE epsilon 4 allele, uh, in those individuals who had the high risk uh, uh, allele of, uh, of this uh, genotype, they had about 3.8 fold uh, risk uh, of dementia if they had uh, diabetes. Uh, there was a, a small uh, increase about 70% also in the individuals who did not have this high-risk uh, uh, allele of APOE4. So it seems that uh, the diabetes and uh, uh, genetic effect of uh, APOE4 uh, have an additive uh, effect. Now, Cerebral infarcts uh, were more common in people with diabetes, uh, and you see here 60% uh, had uh, some sort of uh, cerebral uh, problems in the autopsy, but <clears throat> and the diabetes uh, uh, 
uh, and cerebral infarcts, uh, they increase the risk here uh, in, the, the, in, in the model, taken into account the genetic effect and uh, other risk factors as well. Now, the beta amyloid is accumulated in the people with Alzheimer's disease and dementia, and this was a proportion of people with the beta amyloid. And uh, uh, in, interestingly, in diabetic individuals, there was less uh, beta amyloid uh, uh, than in non-diabetic individuals, which is uh, opposite that uh, it was believed before. And uh, also, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the odds for beta amyloid in the brain uh, was reduced uh, uh, in, the, in, in the statistical models here. So, what are the mechanisms uh, for dementia in diabetes? Clearly, atherosclerosis and brain infarcts, uh, even the silent ones, uh, are important. There are also microvascular disease, which is uh, producing uh, ischemia. And of course, a glucose toxicity for, for uh, dementia is also a possibility. And then insulin, hyperinsulinemia, may uh, increase the beta amyloid, although in our study we could not see it. So it could be vascular. It could be accelerated aging uh, in diabetes, uh, and then the Alzheimer's uh, mechanism with the beta amyloid and uh, tau protein. So the possible etiology uh, of the uh, uh, cognitive decline in diabetes, as I said, cerebrovascular disease, but insulin resistance, uh, there is a uh, several ways how insulin resistance may, uh, may be working. Hyperglycemia may have a direct effect or through endothelial dysfunction. And of course, hyp hypoglycemia in patients who are treated with the drugs could be there. Inflammation and the beta-12 vitamin as well. Uh, deficiency of beta-12. So, uh, systematic reviews uh, uh, have been carried out, and uh, uh, there are different ways how cognitive uh, uh, function can be measured. And that is that we are not making a clinical diagnosis of diabetes, but we are m measuring different domains of uh, cognitive function, like in this case, uh, uh, several studies found that the processing speed uh, of uh, things, attention, memory, cognitive uh, flexibility, uh, uh, and visual memory uh, may be associated with, uh, uh, or, or decline in this, uh, may be associated with diabetes. Clearly, duration of diabetes and a glycemic control and a microvascular disease uh, are, are important risk factors as well. So about hypoglycemia, this one study recently uh, published uh, showed that people who were hospitalized with uh, DKA uh, with hypoglycemia, they had the highest risk of having a, 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 a dementia. And uh, uh, individuals, uh, who had uh, hypoglycemia and no DKA, still they had about 5.6-fold uh, uh, or adjusted 2.5-fold uh, uh, increased risk of dementia. Uh, so it is whether people have a DKA or don't have a DKA, hypoglycemia seem to be contributing uh, to the risk of dementia. And there are several Possibilities, of course, how hypoglycemia may, may operate. Uh, there could be uh, uh, neural cell death uh, in the event of hypoglycemia, and uh, there could be an increase in platelet aggregation and fibrinogen formation. Uh, uh, 
damage in receptors in the regions uh, in the critical uh, for learning and memory. And uh, then uh, there could be also that this uh, association is so-called reverse causation, uh, that uh, people with dementia may have uh, uh, more often hypoglycemia for various reasons. Type 1 diabetes uh, has been also studied, but it is more difficult because usually type 1 diabetic patients are young and uh, you need a very long follow-up. And this uh, uh, classic trial of uh, BCCT in the United States and Canada, they looked at the 27-year uh, follow-up of these patients uh, uh, who were randomized either initially to intensive or less intensive insulin therapy. And they found that uh, uh, those who had a worse metabolic control uh, during the uh, uh, this 27-year peri period, on average, they had uh, uh, declines in the motor speed and psychomotor uh, efficiency. So in type 1 diabetes, there are also problems with the, uh, with the cognitive function in the long run. Now, there have been attempts to develop uh, risk prediction tools uh, for diabetic patients in type 2 diabetic patients. Uh, and this comes from the UK. Uh, and uh, they uh, had uh, three different uh, domains here. Uh, one was uh, age, uh, different points, uh, how old people were. The second domain is uh, vascular domain and the clinical diseases like depression, diabetic food, microvascular disease. And the third one uh, was related to uh, uh, education, because education is uh, very often related to uh, cognitive uh, function. And then adding these points, one can estimate the 10-year risk of, uh, uh, of uh, dementia. So the sum of the points, and uh, if you have a highest possible over 12 points, uh, they predict that over 70% of a diabetic patient in 10 years' time will develop a signs of a cognitive decline uh, or dementia. So we have uh, tools like that available which are simple to apply in clinical practice. And I personally uh, believe that uh, this should be uh, done much more often than uh, done today. Now we have to remember that uh, there are different uh, uh, stages of uh, development of Alzheimer's disease or dementia. It's a long process, and we have a possibility for primary prevention and a secondary prevention uh, during the transitional preclinical phase. And then dementia treatment, of course, is available, although not very efficient today. So regarding the primary prevention, uh, we looked at the, our Finnish diabetes prevention study, uh, the assessment of a, of a so-called Serard score, which is an Alzheimer's disease uh, uh, assessment tool, uh, different uh, uh, psychological tests uh, summarized into that. And we found out that in, in our prevention program, people who had a lower intake of fat or saturated fat and practiced more frequent physical activity. They all were associated with uh, uh, with uh, uh, Serard's score, uh, intake of fat, uh, lower or more physical activity were helpful in keeping uh, cognitive uh, uh, status uh, in, in a good shape. Another study we have been carrying out is uh, called Doctors Extra where uh, we had uh, uh, six different groups of individuals uh, randomly uh, selected, about uh, 1,300, uh, basically physical activity and diet and different groups. And we looked at the um, uh, physical activity or physical fitness uh, with the VO max uh, measurement and uh, memory decline after two years of follow-up. And you see here that uh, there were significant associations. The, if, uh, if the uh, uh, VO max was high, uh, 
uh, the decline in, the, in memory was uh, uh, reduced. Now, uh, different types of interventions in this study, we could show that uh, uh, the aerobic resistance, uh, physical activity, diet, they all were um, uh, helpful in reducing, in preventing cognitive decline. The one word about um, uh, antihypertensive therapy, uh, and there have been studies uh, looking at the uh, cogn uh, cognitive function in the clinical trials in hypertension, and altogether uh, there seems to be that there is an uh, effect which is uh, of a size approximately uh, uh, 15, uh, 10 to 15 percent, not very strong, but still that the antihypertensive therapy seemed to be useful. Uh, the sister trial used the calcium channel blockers, and it seems that the calcium channel blockers may be uh, the best uh, option if there is a problem with the cognitive decline. Now, a few words about the uh, homocysteine. Uh, recently, there have been uh, international consensus statement which uh, points out that the homocysteine is important and how the homocysteine is actually uh, working is uh, related to a lifestyle, uh, folate intake, uh, B12 uh, intake, then we can measure homocysteine, and homocysteine may be uh, associated with cognitive impairment. But the B12 directly or lifestyle, as I said, can also be there. So the homocysteine may not be uh, the only factor, but it, it could be one pathway how uh, uh, different things work. And vitamin B12 deficiency uh, is something that has been shown uh, to be associated with, uh, uh, with the different diseases, dementia, stroke. And uh, uh, the, uh, uh, of course, uh, this is a way also we could prevent uh, dementia if we are correcting a B12 uh, deficiency. And the clinical trials show also that especially metformin is reducing B12 uh, vitamin level, and that has uh, been overlooked at the, at the usually in the clinical practice, and we are not uh, paying enough attention to that. Uh, and the other study was this uh, U.S. diabetes prevention program that used also metformin in one arm, and they also found that the years of metformin use uh, uh, was associated with the B12 deficiency. They recommend that the routine testing of B12 levels in metformin-treated patient should be uh, considered. However, uh, just recently, there are a couple of papers uh, that looked at the uh, real-life data on the metformin use and the risk of dementia like this in, uh, in, in Taiwan. And uh, what, they, what they found was actually the, uh, the longer use of a metformin, the lower was uh, the risk of dementia. Completely opposite than assumed uh, from uh, the other studies. And the same kind of data came from uh, the African-American people with the Veterans Administration uh, uh, program in the, in, in the U.S. Also, uh, the African-American people who had uh, uh, used metformin had uh, reduced uh, risk of, uh, of uh, uh, dementia compared with sulfonylurea. Now, we have to remember that sulfonylurea was used as a reference. And another study just published was uh, looking, comparing uh, DBB4 and sulfonylurea, and DBB4 inhibitor uh, users had a lower uh, progression to dementia compared with the, uh, with the others. Um, hi hyperglycemia is one thing uh, also that uh, has to be kept in mind. And there are data showing that those who have a hyperglycemia events, uh, then they have, a, they have a higher risk of dementia compared with those who don't have. Now, there are many different things that uh, can be uh, considered in, the, in the dementia 
development and, and also that how to prevent potential cases uh, of dementia. And uh, WHO has recently published uh, two years ago uh, a statement about the uh, global action plan uh, for, for dementia and cognitive decline prevention. And uh, uh, there are studies that uh, have been uh, pointing out the different factors that can be considered. And finally, I show you a couple of slides from uh, uh, our recent uh, study uh, called Finger, which uh, uh, was a first uh, a randomized controlled trial to prevent uh, cognitive decline uh, in uh, uh, high-risk individuals. So we had uh, nutrition, physical activity, cognitive social uh, uh, support, and uh, monitoring management of vascular risk factors. Uh, randomized into a control group, intensive intervention group uh, for two years. And we published uh, two years ago our first uh, results, uh, and uh, we could show that those individuals who were in the, in the intervention, there was actually improvement in the, in the cognitive uh, domains, several cognitive domains here, uh, compared with the control group. So it seems that uh, we have a possibility to prevent uh, cognitive decline by lifestyle intervention. And when we uh, classified people with the genetically high risk or low risk individuals, there was no difference. Both of them benefited from uh, uh, lifestyle intervention. So uh, there are many aspects of uh, diabetes and, uh, and dementia uh, that need to be considered. We have now the uh, first evidence that uh, uh, lifestyle intervention may work uh, to, for prevent. And uh, metformin users, uh, I recommend that the B, uh, B12 vitamin levels are monitored, uh, especially if there is something to do with the cognition. And if you are interested in the prevention of diabetes, next year there will be a congress in Peru. Thank you very much for your attention.